Continuing in the grand new tradition we have of telling people where people are and what vehicle they're in, this is The Girls on the Bus. This is on Max. It has audio description. And I'm going to need you to click that subscribe button because we're going to talk about this pilot. I've been doing pilot reviews for new TV shows just so that we can talk about them. And uh, do they have good audio description? Do they work as a show? Anything. So I think it's fun that this is like earlier, just a couple months ago, we released The Boys on the Boat. And uh, this is The Girls on the Bus. And uh, I feel like that's like a weird double feature of the people in some, like, which one? Who will get there first? Will it be the boys in the boat or the girls on the bus? Which one will win? Find out next week on the trainers. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a political dramedy. Cromedy? Crama? Crama? Uh, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what this is. I didn't like it. <laughs> and it's not because, I don't know, people are going to be like, oh, you don't like it because, I, I like, no, I, I don't think it has anything to say. That's what, <laughs> it's the worst kind of political stuff though, of, of all. It's like, I was like, what is this? What are we doing here? It has like some moments, but it's like trying to like be everything for everybody so that like. No matter where you stand on anything, um, you'll feel represented in this. It has, like, the conservative black woman uh, in this who is, they're, they're like, of course. And I, I said it like that, like, it was, like, this big, huge revelation. But they, what they're doing with it is is the the usual sort of, like, how can you be a person of color and also be a Republican? Well, I know everyone is racist. At least the Republicans don't lie to me. You know, <laughs> it's just like, okay, well, whatever. What is this show doing? So she's the um, uh, the cast member who's the, you know, um, right wing. They, I love that we're all using the term white nationalist, but they make a joke about her liberty. What does she write for? Liberty something. And then they find a way to make make a joke about it being a liberty white nationalist or something i don't know she's writes for something and uh she's they're all all these girls are trying to be on you know presidential uh, campaign buses basically they're trying to get through this presidential campaign uh there's this first opening candidate who i cannot imagine is going to sustain and be the only candidate for the entire show but anyway they un supposedly the plot summary for the show is that it's it's these women who are discovering life, love, happiness, friendship, all that bullshit. And then also something that could change democracy forever. <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's... Uh, and then they show, like, these, uh, like, hints in the previews of, like, we're headed towards, like, basically January 6th. But these are not real candidates. Like, they're not following anybody who's actually... This is not a real show. This isn't actually... So, the whole time I was like, what do you? What are we trying to do here? What are we trying to say? Because I don't think this show is trying to do or say anything. The audio description is really upbeat, which indicates to me that this thing intends on being a comedy. Because uh, it, if this tonally... This tonally wouldn't work with the way we're headed audio description-wise. I don't have a problem with the audio description. I thought it was well described. It is a show that, um, because it has to, it describes, uh, it doesn't default. And it, it has to describe the the race of certain characters, uh, you know, because it gets brought up. Uh, so I've seen other projects where they don't mention it and then they still mention the race of the characters and you're just like, wait a minute, that character is what? At least they mention the fact that she's black before we get to the point where they try to make something about it. Um, that It's it's funny, the small crumbs that we get happy with in audio description. Uh, Acting-wise, I don't know, these characters are... I got, like, Melissa Benoist and Carla Gugino are, like, the two probably most well-known 
actresses in this film or this series. They're fine. They've both been better in things before, though. I'm not gonna lie. I just the show just doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. It reminds me of uh, what this kind of stuff used to look like and what we used to get. And uh, someone here clearly watched some Aaron Sorkin in their life. And they were like, mm, when I get my shot, I swear, I am going to write like Aaron's. You are no girl. Sit down. This is nothing like Aaron Sorkin. You have nothing to say. You're trying to appease everyone. The show's going nowhere. The show has nothing to say or nothing to do. It's just some women who work in politics. It's, uh, it, but it's not even like Sex and the City enough to work that angle. It doesn't even, it just, I don't know what the show wants to be or why it's here. I really just, I don't. Because it's not biting enough to be one way. It's not satirical enough to be another way. It's not uh, f uh, f female fo forward enough to be a, a um, you know, four crazy girls who happen to be all press journalists on, pre on pre presidential tours or fun and flirty and living their best lives and having sex with whoever they want. You know, it's not one of those shows either. It's just, I don't know what this is. And the pilot, and that's a, such a problem for a pilot episode because the pilot episode is really supposed to define the show. And I felt like it really doesn't do that. It kind of like, it, it, it introduces who these people are and like publications they work for and some, me, you know, some men, some male characters, just for good measure. Um, and there's a thing that happens at the end that's sort of a scandal slash twist. And you're like, wow, that had no resonance because we didn't really invest that much time into it. So, um, y you know, you're not, I didn't feel anything about the scandal or the twist or the fact, you know, that it happened. You're supposed to, I guess, feel only something for the character that got played. And you're like, oh, well, she got played. Uh, I guess that's what's happening in this show. But she didn't really get played in like a great political way. You know, there's one way to do it, and that's Veep, which is hilarious. And Veep doesn't really have, um, isn't really making up too many minds. I think what's interesting is that Veep has, um, sh she's Republican, I believe, in that. And it doesn't really make fun of Republicans, you know? I think a lot of people forget that, is that a lot of times the writers use Republicans in these shows... But they don't actually make fun of them. You know, I mean, like, they're not making fun of her agenda. They're not, they're making fun of politics, like the world of politics in general. But that world would be wacky even if it, if, even if Selena Meyer was a Democrat. That show just has something to say, and it doesn't really matter where that person is. The same thing is actually true of a show from a long time ago that we all hold very dear, which is The West Wing. Jedediah Bartlett was a Republican in that show. And he was a Republican during the Clinton administration. That show premiered prior to Bush being elected president. So Aaron Sorkin made that choice before that. And yes, it did run into, but he made a choice to make uh, Jedediah Bartlett a Republican. And he didn't really, he wasn't using that as a, necessarily a a a tool to divide us you know he was just using it as a as a way to show people both sides to show people like this world and it's funny how many people who are not republicans hold up the west wing and they're like wow this is a great show show really has something to say it's like it does because he does it really well because he understands what it is he's trying to say what he is he's trying to do it has a voice it has an intention and he is able to also not alienate. Um, and Veep does the same thing. This doesn't do anything. It's just, it has some moments where you're like, okay, well, I don't think conservative people would like that reference. You know, when they have the one conservative character who's like, everyone's racist. At least they're not lying to me about it. I'm like, I don't know if that is exactly what and anyway 
So, yeah, it just doesn't go anywhere, doesn't do anything. I can't really recommend the show. Audio description's fine if you want to watch it. Uh, I, I know it's Women's History Month, and I should be like, oh my god, the girl's in the bus, guys. But this is really disappointing. Um, I, I, if you like Carla Gugino, she was in a really terrific show on Peacock called Leopard Skin. Leopard Skin that I don't think anybody saw. So why don't you go catch up on that instead? Melissa Benoist, I don't know, watch Blash or something. I don't know, watch something else that she's been in. Uh, I don't know the other girls, so I, I didn't recognize their names. Um, there's a couple other people down the line who are in, occasionally pop up in the show that are just sort of like people who float through TV shows. But that's that's the girls on the bus. It has doesn't go anywhere, doesn't really do anything, doesn't really have anything to say. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. But as a pilot episode, you're never guaranteed however however many episodes you got when Max picked you up, you're not guaranteed that the audience is ever gonna watch those episodes. And that's the thing that I think that's why I wanted to start talking more and more about pilots, is because I started noticing more and more pilots really are not that good. Like, later on down the line, you end up watching, and if you stick with the show for a certain reason, maybe you'll find the show. Maybe you won't. There have been some shows where I watched a couple episodes, and I'm like, nah, this, this still isn't clicking. And other shows where I watch later episodes, and I'm like, why does it get better by like on, like, episode four? You know, like, why is that the case? Why was the pilot awful, but then, like, by episode four is good? Like, the new look on Apple... I hated the pilot. I almost gave it. I almost didn't watch the second episode. But later on down the line, it gets really good. The pilot is is dreadfully slow and directionless. So I, I don't know what to do with these shows. But uh, we got to make better pilots, guys. You don't, you're never guaranteed more than one episode. So if you want people to watch your show, you got to hit people um, with more. So I'm giving the girls on the bus... A C minus. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't know, maybe I'll watch another episode just to do that. That's a good butter. I do like Carly Gugino. She's probably the only person here. Usually I, I watch more episodes because of a cast member. Carly Gugino is probably going to be the one that takes this to another episode if I go there. Um, because I really, I, I, while I like Melissa Benoist, she, there's, she's not enough to carry me to a second episode on a TV series. So luckily Carla Gugino, who I miss her Karen Sisko so much, and I wish that had been given more than one season. Um, so out of respect to the fact that her Karen Sisko <laughs> got canceled really quickly and shouldn't have been, um, we'll check this out. So Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will see you guys on the other side.